Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. On this week's Michigan Magazine, we're celebrating a few unique Michigan events. We're first heading to Oxford for our first segment on the first annual Lone Ranger Day. Oxford, of course, was the home of Brace Beamer, whose voice many children of the 40s and 50s grew up recognizing on the radio as that of the Lone Ranger. Michigan Magazine's Jim Hughes and Terry Stiles will be bringing us interviews of family and friends of the Beamers. Also, Jim will be back on deck later in the show to give us a quick look and highlights of the 2014 International Auto Show held at Cobo Center in Detroit. We're also going to have our next installment of our shelter stories, a look at the latest adoptable pets from animal shelters across the state. Stay tuned, it's coming up next, plus today's phrase of the day, giving you a chance to win big in our celebration of 25 years on the air, here at Michigan Magazine. Program support provided by Thunder Bay Resort, offering a winter getaway where sleigh bells echo through dense hardwood forests. Guests can experience a search for the majestic and elusive elk viewed from horse-drawn sleighs. Then return to a welcomed fire, gourmet dinner, and tales of the day shared over a glass of wine from nearby Stony Acres Winery. USA Today calls the sleigh ride at Thunder Bay Resort one of ten great places to ride into a courier and Ives. Located in Hillman on Michigan's Sunrise Side. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Mile for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mile. From the 1930s to the early 1950s, children could be found gathered around the old tube radio to hear the adventures of the Lone Ranger. Those were exciting times with heroes of the Old West coming to life in the minds and imaginations through the miracle of radio. There's one community in Oakland County, Michigan that takes pride in the fact that they played an integral part in this time in history. Oxford, Michigan lays claim to being the true home of Brace Beamer, the man whose voice was the most recognizable as the Lone Ranger. Beamer was born in Mark Carmel, Illinois back in 1902, but from 1941 through his passing in 1965, Michigan was his home as he broadcast the amazing success series from the studios of WXYZ Detroit. From 1941 through 1954, Oxford has always recognized this notable fact, but it's just recently that they pulled all the stops out by celebrating Lone Ranger Days with a big fun drive aimed at creating a statue as a memorial to their favorite son. It's going to be an annual event. Michigan Magazine was at last year's event with Jim Hughes, Terry Stiles, and camera crew Jeremy Lane and Darlene Lane, who caught all the excitement of a community bursting at the seams with pride. Events included a gigantic parade, sidewalk sales, art displays, tours of the Beamer homestead, and a local museum overflowing with Brace Beamer memorabilia. This is where part one of our festival coverage begins, as Jim Hughes meets and visits with a grandson of the Lone Ranger. And we are actually in the uh, Oxford Museum right now. It is, of course, uh, the Lone Ranger uh, days with the uh, Home of the Mask. Uh, a lot of great things have been lent to the museum for uh, people just to come in. And it's just uh, what a great collection here at the museum today. Uh, with a gentleman here who has an association with Brace Beamer, we're going to find out a little bit more. What's your name, sir? My name is Bob Daniel. Now, what is your relationship to Mr. Beamer? He was my grandfather. And I understand that you have a, a lot of things that you've contributed here with uh, pictures. And uh, t tell me how you feel about a day like this, you know, honoring your grandfather. Obviously, Oxford's been synonymous with the radio home of the Lone Ranger. How do you feel about it today? I mean, now that it's coming to fruition. I think it's fantastic. I've been looking forward to this as soon as I heard about it. Um, I think it's one of those things that's a great thing for the community. And obviously, we're really happy that it's honoring my grandfather. 
Uh, you now you as I say there's a lot of things that you were sharing with people like older photos and the, the house on Drainer Road obviously you have some early pictures there and uh, it, it's kind of a great identifier here for the community absolutely I mean people know about the farm they know about the the home out on Drainer Road a lot of people actually live in the on the farm actually if you think about it because it was developed after he left the series and uh, turned into residential property so there's I think there's five lakes out there and there's homes around the lakes that uh, folks bought the property during that period from about 1954 up until the mid 60s now you're up from uh, you're from where the uh, you said it was a net national and um, how long have you been uh, you know, have you heard about the festival and I mean how long have you been part of it here well this is the first time I've actually been a part of it um, there was a festival here of course I think it was 1982 when they were st originally raising money to, to put up the statue and my mother and my father came up for that festival which of course turned out to be the middle of an ice storm so there were some challenges there but they had a great time and it's just great to see that now here we are even if it is 30 years later that we're really bringing out just the whole connection between the community and my grandfather and the radio program especially because this is the 80th anniversary year of the first broadcast obviously yeah we a lot of information has been shared with our local newspaper and I mean there's a I mean a, 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 you know not only was the he the radio Lone Ranger but I mean a, a war hero as well absolutely um, he was the youngest member of the American Expeditionary Forces in World War one he lied about his age on his original enlistment it lists him as 18 years old and uh, I think it's called 18 and a third or 18 and a quarter years old and they actually went back later to prove that he was actually 14 years old and what I understand he was also uh, uh, made a U uh, was it a US Marshal as well I com a, they made him uh, a com they made him an honorary Texas Ranger Texas Ranger okay um, he was inducted into I think any place that he made a personal appearance he was made a member of the law enforcement community there um, and he was made a member of the Legion of Frontiersmen in Canada um, and um, an, uh, became an honorary member of a number of Native American tribes from Seminole to Pawnee to Sioux. Well, I tell you, it's actually great to have a connection, have you come and be part of our community up here in Oxford. And uh, I know the people of Michigan Magazine are just learning a little bit more about a community just north of Detroit in Oxford and uh, the home of the Lone Ranger, Brace Beamer. And uh, I, I thank you. It was an honor to talk to you, sir. Thank you so much. And I hope uh, next year it'll be another festival and everybody will come up and it'll be even bigger and better. I'm sure you're going to be here, right? If it's happening, I'll be here. Anita, I am Terry Stiles, and I'm from Oxford, but I have not been in this community as long as you have. You grew up here, right? And your name? My, my name in high school right. was Anita Joanne Moses, and Barb Beamer was a uh, grade behind me. She graduated in 47. I graduated in 46. But I spent many hours with her. We were good friends at the farmhouse with Brace, listening to the recordings of his programs. Tell me some of your warmest memories about them as a couple. Uh, very, a lot of fun. Kids were always welcome at the house. And uh, there's a picture that um, Barb's son, who was here, uh, Bob has of them around the fireplace in the main living room. And I spent many hours there, too, <laughs> with Brace. And a fun story about Brace was I was married in uh, 49. And I was in town again about uh, early 1950s. And my husband came from Rochester, New York. And his niece and nephew, ages seven and nine, as I remember, came to visit. And I said, would you like to meet the Lone Ranger? <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, the nephew was very allergic to animals. But we went, I called Brace. He said, give me an hour, because he loved to dress up and saddle silver at that time and so we went out the kids got to ride silver in the paddock and he talked to them for a while and the nephew was very ill for two weeks after but the happiest kid in new york state <laughs> yeah brace liked to he always wanted to be in character for things like that and i had seen him many times do it for people so that was a very fond memory of of him and uh you know, Barb had left at that time, and she was the youngest of the children, so the boy... Barb, his daughter. His daughter, Barbara Beamer, yeah. And it's her son who is here today. And she passed away not long ago. She was even hoping to come to this, 
but uh, and he said his dad wasn't well enough to come so it was now you're telling me that he d he dressed up for the children but he did a lot of charitable stuff for the community correct a lot of charitable stuff yeah a lot of things he was always loved to be in character and that gorgeous voice and was always willing to help and loved Oxford well, thank you for sharing that story with us. It's always nice to get that little personal bit of what he was about as a human being. Thank you. We'll be back soon. On our next report from Lone Ranger Day, Terry and Jim will be back with visits with the many visitors in the streets of Oxford, along with some of the vendors, plus plenty of reminiscing from family and friends who knew Brace Beamer personally. Stay tuned, Lone Ranger fans. We'll have much, much more as we get closer to the next Lone Ranger Day, which will be the official second annual, scheduled for August 2nd, 2014. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Cops and Donuts Bakery, Downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of Northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. Shelter stories, an update of pets at animal shelters throughout Michigan. Before you buy, think about adopting first. Your best friend could be anxiously awaiting. Shelter stories is brought to you in part by Carrie's Gentle Grooming and Supply on Putnam Road in Hale. Carrie's Gentle Grooming and Supply is a full-service pet grooming salon for all breeds and sizes, even cats. When you bring your pet to Carrie's, you know you're providing the best for your best friend. Carrie's Gentle Grooming and Supply, Hale. As Michigan Magazine scours the animal shelters throughout the state to bring the stories of rescue and animal adoption, it's essential that we stress to all our viewers that sometimes the story's ultimate outcome is not a happy one. There are still shelters out there that have little space and to euthanize is the ultimate outcome. That's their solution to an overcrowded shelter, and it's not necessarily the sick or weak that face this ultimate demise. Even the healthiest and seemingly happiest within some shelters are terminated simply because there was no room at the inn. We do salute shelters like you see here who make every effort to find homes for the homeless, who do not euthanize simply to make more room, but they are out there. And we urge you to visit your local shelter and make it priority to adopt and not shop for your next forever family friend. And remember that some shelters are not restricted to cats and dogs, but also are sheltered to everything from guinea pigs to pigeons, parrots, cockatiels, and everything in between. Think about it, won't you, as we now present this week's review of sheltered pets throughout Michigan, waiting for their forever family home.
shelter stories, an update of pets at animal shelters throughout Michigan. Before you buy, think about adopting first. Your best friend could be anxiously awaiting. Shelter Stories is brought to you in part by Carrie's Gentle Grooming and Supply on Putnam Road in Hale. Carrie's Gentle Grooming and Supply is a full-service pet grooming salon for all breeds and sizes, even cats. When you bring your pet to Carrie's, you know you're providing the best for your best friend. Carrie's Gentle Grooming and Supply, Hale. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy. Oh, and she even talks to it. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Hi, I'm Anthony. Hi, I'm Kelly. And you're watching Michigan Magazine. Yes, it is opening day. We're at the International Auto Show here in the Motor City, Detroit, 25th year, and it is kind of the mark of the brand new year and a second holiday for a lot of Motor City people and Detroit people, international people as well. We are going to bring in here on behalf of Michigan Magazine, try to bring up a little of it to you, oh, and hopefully you'll be able to see what's new and out for 2014, a lot of concept vehicles. What's your name? My name's Ethan. John. Uh, okay, Ethan. and you came from where? Minnesota. Do you, have, do you have anything like this up in Minnesota? Uh, no, not like this. Well, what do you think of this auto show, the 25th year? I tell you, it's, we, we do this every year. It's kind of our second uh, holiday here in the Motor City. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's definitely a lot of shiny cars and awesome, a lot of people, too. Are you looking for an automobile right now? Um, no, I'm in college right now. I'm actually going to college in Ohio at the University of Northwestern Ohio. So. We have a lot of good things to watch here, and maybe things when you get out of school you might want to pick up, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, what do you what do you lend yourself to? More of the muscle, or do you like more of the RV type? What kind of cars do you like? I like a little more of the American muscle type cars. So they're they don't go too good. They don't go too good in Minnesota or Michigan, but they're good in the summertime, right? Uh, yep, definitely good in the summertime. And we are here uh, next to the Challenger, the Hemi, uh, in the Dodge display. We caught up with two gentlemen. What's your name, sir? My name's Clay Carpenter. And what's your name? Cody Carpenter. Uh, you do you have a specific vehicle you're looking at, or are you just you're down here just kind of enjoying all the eye candy? Well, we enjoy all the cars, specifically the American-made cars. We're looking at the Ford, GM, and Chrysler products. Now, did you go over to the display in Ford and see the uh, concept uh, Mustang along with the 65? They have a nice display over there. No, I missn't that. I saw that old uh, 1930. Was it 33? 33. You got to go back to Ford. I tell you, they got a 62. The concept of what the vehicle was going to look like two years later, the uh, 65. Again, though, we're in the Dodge display. I tell you, Detroit muscle is pretty well represented. You know, you, you might like the economy, you might like the plug-in cars, but when you get right down to it, some of us just like the muscle, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes. Which, what's your favorite? What's your favorite muscle car? Well, of course, the Corvette's one of them. You know, but any one of the yeah. Corvette. Have you guys been over to see that? Yes. yes. Yeah, we just came from that. We're trying to make our way over there. We've only got out of the Ford. Now we just entered Dodge. It's going to be crowded over yeah. there. Uh, what's your name, sir? Terry. And what's your name? Uh, George. You guys are over from Canada, I understand. Where, where, what part of Canada are you from? London, Ontario. Yes, same pigs. Uh, by the 401, if I recall. You can take this thing out on the 401, couldn't you? I'd have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Get to Toronto real fast in this car, right? Yes, do you guys come here every year for the auto show? We do. We do a bus trip down every year. Okay. I, I mean, I, as we ask everybody, what's your favorite car? Uh, I mean, here at the auto show, are you looking for anything? I mean, do you like the Detroit Muscle? Do you like the uh, the electric car? I mean, I like the electric cars, but we, I like Muscle. It's been in, the electrics have been real interesting because they've come so far. Uh, but we're here mostly because of the performance stuff, and it's so nice to see the, the performance cars here for a change. They, they generally don't bring them all out, but this year they've really done 
a, an excellent job of it. I mean, it seems like Ford, they got the Mustang over there, you got the Challenger and Charger over in Dodge, and obviously General Motors quite pleased. I mean, next door neighbors to Cobo Hall here had to be definitely pleased with Car of the Year and Truck of the Year. I mean, you can't get no better for that for General Motors. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's really nice for Detroit to see the big three getting some stuff and some awards and some hardware out there because they need it. Hi, my name is Kenny. My name is Ritzy. And you're watching Michigan Magazine. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Michigan Magazine. Today's phrase of the week is Hi-Ho Silver Away. Send it to us via email at iwatchmichiganmagazine at gmail.com and you'll be entered to win great prizes like vacation getaways to Thunder Bay Resort or beautiful Canyons Lodge on Sage Lake. You can also mail the winning phrase to Michigan Magazine, Box 424, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Have a great week and we'll see you here next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Have fun with your photos at Rose City Drug. In the photo department, get fast processing and have fun by creating unique digital photo gifts on site or online. Save those precious memories at Rose City Drug, 2640 North M33, Rose City, or online. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery.